this song number 34 song number 34 we've come to lift up the mighty name of Jesus and he has blessed us one more in to be present with him Psalm number 34, when you found it, you will discover these words. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Amen. Eternal God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. Lord, we thank you again for just being good and being God. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We say hallowed to your name, Father, for you are good and you are God. We say hallowed to your name, Father God, and we say yes to your will. We praise you, we worship you, we honor you, Father God, for you are the great God and you're the great King. We pray, Father God, that you forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for missing the target. Forgive us for missing the mark, Father God. We have sinned before you and before heaven. We ask you, God, to forgive us now. And Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us as we come today to worship you. We pray that your Holy Spirit will make his presence known, that the Holy Spirit will unction us to worship and praise you, Father God, that the Holy Spirit, Father God, will have his way in this room, that old habits will be rolled away and old burdens will be thrown away. That life will roll on just a little while longer and we can leave this place better than we were when we showed up. We pray today, Father God, that you continue to walk with us. Bless us to be living, walking examples of who Jesus is. Bless us this day, Father God, that you will fill us up in this room, that we will come here to worship and honor you. We will come here, Father God, today to be filled to the brim, that we will leave here telling men, women, boys, and girls about the Jesus we serve. We say you are great. We say you are good. We say you are the victorious one, and we thank you now, Lord. We thank you for who you are, for what you do, and how you do things. Lord, we bless you today, Father God, that we, Father God, will forget about who we are in this room, and that we will worship you and give all glory unto you. Lord, it's in the mighty and precious anointed name of Jesus the Christ, the one who died on Calvary and rose early that third day morning. It's in that name we pray, and we ask it all. Amen.
song says, I'm so glad he took my sins away.
Hallelujah to the Lamb. If we're going to be provided for, it's going to be the Father who does it. If we're going to be cared for, it's going to be the Father who does it. It's only because God is able and God keeps us and He keeps right on keeping us. He is the Almighty. He is the Almighty God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It is God Himself who makes a difference. It is God who keeps us and blesses us. It is God all by Himself. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask our guests to come out from, from the back so I can see you and sit right here if you would. If you're visiting with us and you're back there and I can't see you and you can't see me. Come on, come on up here. You can sit on third, fourth row somewhere in there. We're just so glad you're here and we don't want, want you to be blocked and I don't want to be blocked. Why don't we welcome our guests, amen? Welcome. Well, welcome our guests. That's right, young man. Lead those women on up here. Do what you do, man. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We, we thank God for who He is and what He does. He is the awesome and the amazing God. I call your attention to the book of Psalms one more again. Psalm number 147 is where we are today. Psalm 147 verses 1 through 6. Psalm 147 verses 1 through 6 is where we are today. Psalms 147 verses 1 through 6. Through six. If you would stand for the reading of the word of God, if you would stand. Psalm number 147, verses 1 through 6. The psalmist start off happy. Are you happy today? Yes. The, the psalm yes. begin, the psalmist begins this song being happy and excited. He said, Praise the Lord. The psalmist said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. For it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and he calls them by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. I want to talk about God heals the broken. All right, all right. God heals. You may be seated. God heals the broken. God heals. He heals the broken. Before last week, there was a beautiful, tremendously beautiful towel holder sitting on the guest bathroom sink. Before last week, it was beautiful. It was well put together. It wasn't made of wood. It wasn't made of metal. Matter of fact, it was so beautiful, I just sat there sometime and admired it. Sister Harper, it was beautiful. It was maroon with gold trimming, two round loops on the top of it. And every time I went in there and put a towel on it, I was trying to figure out would I put it on this loop or that loop or in between the loop. It was stunningly beautiful. Maroon on the bottom with the with the tash of gold around the bottom of it. And then it was gold with, with silver and black on the top of it. It was simply beautiful, Sister Day, because it was beautiful. <laughs> but because I was so confused of how to use this extremely beautiful towel rack, 
One day I began to hang it through the first loop. And I was able to rest my hands and dry it on that towel. The next time I put another towel in there, I would hang it on the other loop. And I would wash my hands and, and dry it on that towel. Finally, one day I had this great idea. I'm going to run it through both loops and let it hang off on the side. And then what I did, Deacon Alfred, is when I, I went to pull the towel off. Sister David said, okay. <laughs> when I went to pull the towel off, the towel didn't come undone, Sister Whitlock, but the, the towel caused that beautiful vase, that beautiful towel rack, to be pulled off the counter. But now I, I, I was afraid to look down. <laughs> but when I looked down, that thing had broken right at the shelf. It was beautiful. It was gold. It was maroon. It was. <laughs> it had gold trimming. It had black interwoven in it. It was simply beautiful. It had a shelf on it about 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 a foot. Long. I mean, Brother Whitlock, it was beautiful. But when I looked down, Sister Woods, it was in two pieces. Well, it broke the moment it hit the floor. It didn't shatter, but it broke right along midways of that shaft. Today, it's not beautiful. It's just a piece of broken porcelain. It wasn't wood. It wasn't metal. I think it's porcelain. I've been watching it for the last week sitting on the countertop because I had to lay the base, lay, lay the top down and let the base stand up. And I've been watching it and, and I've been asking God. How do I put the pieces back together again? It's broken. It's messed up. Sister Hughes, the good thing is, it didn't shatter. But it's a clean break. So every time I walk in that restroom now, Brother Harper, I, I twist it and I turn it and I try to put the broken piece right back where it was. Now, Brother Carter, I've come to the point where I realize that I can fix it. Again. There are no missing pieces along that shelf. It, it broke clean. It, it was a clear break. I declare after church today, I'm going to fix it again. Now I'm trying to wonder what kind of glue you use on such expensive looking piece of equipment. Now I'm trying to figure out what store do I go to. I know Elmer's is not going to do it. Super glue probably won't hang in there. So I got to go to a manufacturer. I have to contact them and Google won't put me there. But I believe that somebody put this thing together. Somewhere in this world, I gotta find somebody who is the manufacturer, who made it, who put it together. And I need to ask the question how can I put the broken pieces back together again? Somebody in this room today, your life is expensive. But you're living with broken pieces. Yes, yes, baby. I, I stopped by on my way to the rapture to tell you, don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Because even though your pieces are broken, God can heal the broken heart. Even though you're not responsible for the condition you're in. Even though somebody else Pull the towel yeah. and jerk you to the floor. Yeah. 
and you laid there and you didn't have any hope. I came today to tell you that there is hope. Yes, God made you yes, and broke yes, pieces. Yes, yes. Somebody told you you can't make it without me. Somebody said that you're not going to find anybody else like me. I stopped by to tell you you don't want anybody else like them. Somebody said your life will go downhill from here. I stopped by to tell you that the God we serve is such an awesome and such an amazing God. He is the manufacturer and he knows how to put the broken pieces back together. You disappointed? God majors in disappointment. You discouraged? God majors in discouragement. Yes, it does. You get to on a high for one minute, and then you drop down low. God majors in highs and lows. God knows how to put the pieces back together again. Yes, he will. I want to say to you today, hold your hope. There's hope here. Hope is here and it's found in the text. The psalmist, the psalmist is writing a letter to us. And the psalmist writes this letter as Israel comes out of captivity. They spent over 70 years in captivity. They moved from the Babylonians and God has called them back to Jerusalem. And they are happy and, and they are rejoicing. But let me tell you, when you're in slavery a long time, when you get free, you don't know what to do with freedom. That's right, that's right. When you've been talked about a long time, a down talk to a long time, you expect it. Yeah. It says to women all over the world that just because you've been told that you will never be anything, just because you've been told that you will never get anywhere, you don't have to be what they conclude you will be. God majors in broken pieces. Yeah. You have to learn, you have to learn, you have to learn, you have to learn to the fact that, that God can bring you back to where you were. Yeah. I know God has a way of mending stuff together. Yeah. When the Israelites shows back up in Jerusalem, yeah. they are rejoicing, but they're rejoicing half-heartedly. Yeah. So that the writer, the author of Psalm 147. First of all, he had to get himself together. My first point to you is God is concerned about people. And God is concerned about you. I see in the text, first of all, there are people in the text. It's not just a vase. It's not just a towel holder. God is concerned about those who breathe, those who move, those who have conscience, those who have life. God is concerned about you. And if you're still on planet Earth, God is ready to use you. You are not here because you've been so good. You are not here because life has dealt you a good hand. You are not here just because you did the right thing or made the right decision. You are here because of God's amazing grace. And God has given us one more chance to get it right. Yes, you better take your broken pieces to the manufacturer. You, you got to take your book. See, a shade tree mechanic can't work on your car. When it leaves the shade tree mechanic, Sister Carter, when you leave the shade tree mechanic, what happens, your car gets worse and worse every day. You, you, you ever taken your car in? And, and when you took your car in, you took it in because the brakes were squeaking? And any non-mechanic know if the brakes are squeaking, it's probably the brake bag. You have no oil leaking from it, brother. Brother, you have you have just brakes squeaking. And when you take the brakes in to get fixed, all of a sudden your calibers are leaking. All of a sudden your air condition is not getting cold enough. All of a sudden, when you take it into a shade tree mechanic, all of a sudden now your rear reverse light did come on. And the first word you say, Sister Paul, is it was working before I brought it to you, so you better fix it right. That's what you get when you take it to a shade tree. Okay. You don't take it just to anybody. You take it to somebody that's been trained in handling your type of car. 
Matter of fact, if you got a car and there's a new car, they want to get you on this payment plan, and on the payment plan, they got a maintenance agreement. And for the first 12 months, the light going to come on at 5,000 miles when you can really hang in there to 7,500. That's right. Because the manufacturer knows that most people are not going to bring it back in at 5,000 miles. Right. And then they know if they can get you back in at 5,000 and get you on a plan that goes every 5,000 miles before the 12 months are up, you got to pay for your own oil change. That's right. But God has a way of fixing us. Right. You have to tell Job, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't make me. God made me. Yes. And since God has made me, he has placed me where I am to do what I do, the way I do it. And because God made me, when I have a broken piece, I'm going to take it back to the manufacturer. And the manufacturer is God. Here you see in Psalm 147, the psalmist says, praise the Lord. And my Bible has an explanation point. New King James says it with an explanation point. He says, praise the Lord. First of all, in order to praise the Lord, it has to be the people. It has to be people praising him because cows doing what they're supposed to do. Dogs doing what they're supposed to do. Hogs handling their business the way they handle their business. But we have to put unction and pump and prime people to praise the Lord. You, you, said, you heard Sister Hughes, then you come on, y'all. Come on, come on. We got to punch them and prime them. And, y'all, come on, come on. And then Sister David stood around and said, y'all sing out there. Y'all sing out there. We have to pump and prime people to praise the Lord when God has given us the intelligence to praise him all by ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, word, his word praise means praise mean to boast on God. It means to give God the glory. This word praise means to boast on God in a rage. Yes. This word praise means to celebrate God. You ought not be celebrating your children more than you celebrate God. Yeah. Because I'm a witness today that children will let you down. Children will disappoint you. Children will do some things that you know they will never do. And I can tell you that because I did it with my folk. <laughs> and grandparents are just obnoxious. I mean, they just... Oh, that's my baby. My baby's so smart, and my baby knows this, and my baby, even at, at one year old, my baby knows my ABCs. I want to say, baby, everybody, every child that comes out the womb, comes out the womb, able to deal with an iPad these days. Your baby is smart, but everybody's baby is smart. Right. We just have to channel their energy and focus them on what they ought to be doing and that which is good. And when we help them focus on that which is good, then they turn out better. And if I had to just obeyed everything mom and dad had said, I would have been further down the road. But I was just like you. I was sneaking, dodging, and hiding. I was like the little two-year-old who you say, don't touch the stove. So y'all don't have that, those kind of stoves yeah. now. But they used to say, don't touch the stove. And I would look at them. And I would look in and I would see how far down the hallway they are. And then it only took one time. I touched that red part of the stove. The part that had an undercover frame coming out from it. Oh man, just one time it took. And now I understand why mom and daddy said, don't touch the stove. It's like that in our lives. When they say, don't go that way, don't do those things. There's a mess down the road. Matter of fact, what we're saying, young folk, is that we've gone that route and it didn't work out well for us. The Israelites coming back into Jerusalem. The psalmist gets happy. The psalmist gets so happy he says to himself, praise the Lord. And let me tell you, every now and then you better talk to yourself. Folks says to you that if you talk to yourself, you crazy. Let me tell you, if you don't talk to yourself with all this carrying on going around, with all this stuff going around now, if you don't talk to yourself, you will go crazy. I mean, some people have a whole conversation with themselves. They ask questions. 
and they answer the question. I'm not afraid of those who ask questions, but I'm a little concerned about those who answer their own questions. But the Bible says that the psalmist began to talk to himself. In Psalms 103, the Bible says, come on, self, let's praise the Lord. So the psalmist says, praise the Lord. And now and then, you need to talk to yourself. And you need to encourage yourself. David says, when, when I got the jet lag and all these folk were killed and all the places were burned up, I had to talk to myself. And what he said is that, come on, praise the Lord, self. You got to encourage yourself. Because let me tell you, you can't depend on your cronies, your dog, your friends, your buddy okay. to encourage you because they're going to get tired of you. Hey, he Campbell says it like this. He says that sooner or later, folk will help you out when you get sick. But sooner or later, if you keep getting sick, you're going to make somebody sick. Folk will stick in there for a while. They will stick in there, Sister Darius and Jess, for a while. Those are your best friends. They're going to be there through thick and thin. But if you keep getting sick, your friends get thin. <laughs> the psalmist, the psalmist talking to himself. The psalmist says, self praise the Lord. And then he gets happy and he want to get the whole congregation in on the action. And he says, y'all come on and praise the Lord. He says, praise the Lord. He says, people, praise the Lord. You can have, can you take that little bass out? He said, praise the Lord. He said, praise the Lord. And he gives the reason. He says, for it is good to sing praises to our God. He says, it's good. It's good to sing praises to our God. Usually, usually we see men that's all dressed up. They sit off in the cut. Sisters going crazy in a rage of praising the Lord. They're excited and the men act like we don't have anything in the world to praise the Lord for. But many of us have worked dangerous jobs and went in and out of those jobs. And God watched over us. That's enough to praise the Lord. Many of us have never missed a meal on the table. You can look at me and tell I ain't missing many meals. And that's enough to praise the Lord. Some of us in this room, I mean, all of us, uh, some of us are at our right mind. All of us ought to be at our right mind. And if you're at your right mind, then let me share with you. If you're at your right mind, you can't keep your own mind. It takes God to keep your mind. Amen. Therefore, we ought to praise. Praise the Lord. This word praise says we ought to celebrate him in a rage. We ought to get excited about who God is. We ought to get excited about what God does. We ought to get excited about how God does things. Because when we ask him to do something and he doesn't do it or he refuses to come right now, we need to know that it's because God knows more than we know. God is not sitting in the cut just watching you. God is way ahead of you. He's making a way out of nowhere. He shuts down stuff. And he brings them. The psalmist says, Psalm, the psalmist says in verse number one, for it is pleasant. And praise the Lord. Praising the Lord is beautiful. He says it's present. So my next point, my first point is there are people involved. My second point is there's pleasure involved. He says to us today that it is pleasant. And praise is beautiful. It ought to be a pleasure for you to stop what you're doing and praise the Lord. It, it, it ought, you ought to get pleasure out of it. You ought, you ought, to, you ought to get pleasure out of it. You ought to because you're not, you're not praising yourself. You're not praising the preacher. You're not praising the people. You are praising the Lord. I'm talking about God. God who stepped out on nothing in the midst of nowhere and said, come light and light came giving down through the universe. I'm talking about the Lord. God who stooped down into the dust, not even good dirt. He stooped down into the dust of the earth and created a whole man. I'm talking about that God. I'm talking about God that put a man to sleep, took a rib out and boom, there go a pretty woman, a fine woman, a good looking woman. Let me just tell you, sister, it doesn't matter how you look, doesn't matter how you built, God made you. And don't let anybody tell you that you are nothing in the sight of God because God has put energy into you. God can take a rib and make a whole woman. Adam and Eve wasn't born into this earth. They were created. 
Adam and Eve showed up because of the hands of God. And then Adam got so excited. What you gonna call her? You call her giraffe or giraffe? You call her animal or every animal you name every one. He said, whoa, man. Look what God has done. Whoa, whoa, man. She's a woman that was taken from, from my rib. She was a woman. And look what God has done. Oh man, that's why that's why I, I, I know I know things or spirits. I, I know those spirits fall upon or get involved with other people, but I just can't understand it, Brother Hopper, how I can look at Brother Miles the way I look at Sister Davis. I, I just can't get it. I, I mean, I know spirits control people. I, I can't get it. And when we're working around here I, and, and Brother Miles bumped me, look, let me tell you, I'm trying to see how he bumped me. <laughs> And when, when we hug, when we give brotherly love, we give one hug and we let go. When God created a man, and then he created a woman, God fashioned a man from the dust of the earth. No doctor in town can do it. God has made everything, and everything that man makes is a byproduct of what God has already made. And that's the God we ought to praise. The psalmist said the people, the people ought to praise. The psalmist said that you ought to get pleasure out of praising. It ought to be a pleasant thing for you to praise him. This word beautiful in the original Hebrew means that it is fitting. It is fitting for us to praise the Lord. We, we're the church. We're the church of Jesus Christ. We know God. We know what God has done for us. And if you are black or brown, you shall know what God has done for you. And then some of us grew up on the wrong side of the track, regardless of our color. Some of us grew up on the wrong side of the bayou. Some of us grew up on the opposite side. But let me just tell you, regardless of what side you grew up on, God is there, God is here, and there is hope. And we ought to know that it's fitting. It's a beautiful thing. To praise the Lord. Amen. Sister said, sister said that it's, it's amazing when I see a man praise the Lord. Amen. She said, ooh, when I see a man praise the Lord, that just gets my attention. I said, sister, don't tell me anymore now. No, no. <laughs> she said, when a man praises the God, praises the God that I serve, it's a beautiful thing because not many men are willing to show their inner affection on the outside. That's right. Verse number two says, the Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Islam. My second thing, my third thing to you is it's a privilege to praise the Lord. That's right. All right. It is a privilege. It's a privilege in the fact that you don't deserve to even praise him. The Bible says, the Bible says right here in the text, it says that the Lord builds up Jerusalem. The Lord builds us up. The Lord is the one. The word is okonome. The word is okidome. The word means to build up, to edify. The Lord builds you up when other folk tear you down. That's right. That's right. When your stuff get broken. And let me tell you, sometimes our minds can get broken. That's right. That's right. Sometimes our minds can go astray. Sometimes when we pray, we just fall asleep in prayer. It's not because we enjoy the presence of the Lord. It's because we've done everything else but got along with God. Right. God is looking for us to understand that there's a privilege to even confront him. Yeah, right. There's a privilege to even get in contact with him. There's a privilege to even call on his name. It's a privilege. God has granted us the privilege. And every now and then we ought to raise our hands. Every now and then we ought to clap for joy. Every now and then we ought to jump and leap on our feet. Every now and then we ought to leave our walking canes where they are and trust God to bless him and to hold us. Because it's a privilege. I, I know your neighbors, your neighbors say, no, nah, it doesn't take all that. But you need to tell your neighbor, you haven't been where I've been. And you don't know what God has done for me. What God has done for me in the midst of it all, God has kept me. God did it for me. Did he do it for you? 18, 18, I mean 18 long hours on life support and all of a sudden I get up and my mind is still regulated by God. 
18 hours on life support and my heart is still beating to every extremity of my body. 18 hours on life support where I was hanging between life and death and all it took is one little punch of the butt or one little twerk or one little thought from God and I would have been out of here. But God saw fit to give me one more chance. He gave, he gave me one more chance. I mean, my life was so messed up. Physically messed up. Spiritually messed up. Emotionally messed up. And let me tell you, there are more crazy folk than those who are in the asylum. I think I said it again. There's some crazy folk that ain't locked up. And there are some folk who do their dirt and then they are too mentally deranged in order to, to go to court and to be tried. That's right. If God doesn't keep your mind, oh, it can't be kept. Oh, so I say there are people, there, there's a pleasure, and, and there is a privilege. It's a privilege to honor God. It says that, that God builds up Jerusalem and he gathers together the outcasts. The outcasts, those who others have turned away. Those who others have told that you ain't fit. Those who others said that you will never make it. It is the outcast. Let me just share with you, when God is involved, God can do anything with nothing at all. You got to turn it over to Jesus. And if you're the outcast, you need to understand that God is still in charge. God is still in charge. They, they told you that your, your smarts wouldn't get you there. And they're right. It takes God to get you there. They told you that you couldn't do it on your own. In their right, God has to do it for you. They told you that you can't make it. Even doctors have given you a negative report. But God keeps blessing you in the midst of it. It's a privilege in order to honor God with what he does. God builds us up. He gathers up the outcasts. And let me tell you, sometime I miss the team. Sometimes they didn't choose me on the team. Sometimes they said, no, you're not fast enough. Sometimes they said, no, you're not, you're not sharp enough. Sometimes they said, the last time you had that, you batted on a 3-0 and pitch. And we can't let you do it anymore. So they wouldn't let me go out that day on the team. But I thank God. Now I'm on the right team. I'm on Jesus' team, and because I'm on Jesus' team, every time he takes another chance on me, every single morning, somebody in this room needs to know, if your life is broken, if your life is messed up, God will still put you in the game. That's the way. That's the way. God will still put you in the game. The next point to you is there's prosperity. There is. There's prosperity. God heals the broken. Verse number three says, he heals the broken hearted and bounds up their wounds. Amen. God heals the broken hearted. Mm -hmm. The disappointed. Yeah. The disenfranchised. God is able to heal you when you're down and out. Oh, yeah. You got to get it to God. A right. few days ago, you didn't know but I knew. A few days ago, I was walking and said, now God, how you going to fix this one for me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a pastor, I've been at my lowest of lowest. And I couldn't tell other pastors because they'll tell everybody else. There was a time I was at my lowest of lowest. And then I researched a counselor. And then, then when I went on Facebook, that counselor was friends with all my friends. So I couldn't try that one. So I concluded. That Isaiah has told me that he is the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the prince of peace. He's the everlasting father. He's the root out of dry ground. His name is Jesus. And I have to walk with him and allow him to walk with me. So you know what The Bible does say and the Bible is clear that confession is good for the heart. Confession is good for the soul. Confession is good to get out of stuff. It says confess your faults one to the other. But that was before Facebook. That was before Twitter. That was before email. Somebody in this room today has already posted. Well, the subject is 
the scripture is. And then if your business is out there, they'll tell you, before you talk to your counselor, you need to spend some time talking to the Lord. Everybody needs a counselor. I'm telling you, everybody, I support it. You need a counselor. You need somebody who's qualified to deal with your stuff. You need somebody who can listen to you and not judge you. You need somebody, and it's not always the preacher. Some pastors think that every member got to come to me so I can fix it, and he can't fix himself. Matter of fact, he need, he need a counselor. We have to get to a point in our lives when we realize that God has placed these people who are educated, these people who are sound, these people who have gotten their degrees, these people who have gotten their certification so we can live fruitful lives. And you don't have to be embarrassed about it because you know what? Even the council got issues. He or she just qualified to handle no issues. And then after they get through listening to your issues and give you the right things for your issues, then they go to their counselor and let their counselor fix their issues. Because everybody needs somebody with skin on it that can speak into their lives. You need somebody who can motivate you when you're tired, when you're depressed, when jobs have done you wrong, when you committed your life to them and you committed service to them. And they will tell you, here's your peak and your red slip, and you don't even get a service package. Somebody needs somebody that can speak into their lives. The Bible said God heals the brokenhearted. He binds up the wounds. I want to tell you there's prosperity in the text. When I say prosperity, I mean that there is wealth in the text. There's health in the text. There is building up in the text. There is an exchange in the text that nobody can give you but God himself. You need to make sure that you are prosperous in life. Let me just put this out here now. Just because you are poor and broke, you're not going to heaven anyway. Somebody have told you that in order to get to heaven, you like you gotta look mean. You gotta dress well. You gotta look like you got it going on. And you don't have to have a lot of money. If, if you don't get to heaven, they misuse that scripture that says it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to go through heaven to get to heaven. Let me just share with you, Lord, I take my chances. You'll get there when you get to the house. Lord, I take my chances. God, give me prosperity. I told I told the church several times, let me tell you something. If I get the money that some of these athletes get, just say if God gives me $26 million a day, I have $26 million plus more when Jesus gets back. All right, all right. It's all about how you handle it. And when the Bible says that, that a camel has to go through an eye of a needle, it means that there's a hole in the city. There's a hole in the gate. There's a hole in the fence. And the camel couldn't get in with all his stuff on. So what the camel had to do is get unpacked. And once the leader unpacked the camel, he would bow down and crunch down. And he would get through the eye of the needle. Let me just share with you. The Bible says that once he gets through the eye of the needle, then the, then the owner comes back on the other side. And he repacked the same stuff that he took off. Let me tell you the God that I serve. He's able to pack us up, and he's able to unpack us, and he's able to give us prosperity. You all not, you all not want to be broke. You, 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 you all not, you all not want to be credit score five hundred. You, you, you all not, you all, you all not be acting like that. Stop quoting the Bible and misquoting the Bible, because at the end of the day, God wants His children to prosper. The Bible says he wants you to prosper even as your soul prospers. Yeah. You have to be a good steward over everything God gives you. Yeah. Yeah. And watch what God does with what he gives you. Yeah. God can do more with, 90, with 10% than we can do with 90%. Yeah. You give him the 10% and trust God with it. God can do more with the 10% than he can do with 90%. And the Bible says that as you he, you give him the 10%, he turn around and take the 10% and bless you with 100%. Look at who God is. I'm a witness. I'm telling you, I, I have the same suit. You know, Steve Harvey, I think he has a revelation now. 
He said, everybody needs five suits. Black, brown, tan, blue, gray, everybody needs five suits. And he said, and then you can get 75 wardrobes with those five suits. He, he figured that out as a rich man. I figured that out as a poor brother. I figured it out. I figured it out a long time ago. You see, women have to change dresses and they have to change skirts. Men can make it. You can put on a tan pair of pants, put on a blue suit, put on a tan pair of pants, put on a black suit. And it's because when you're poor and broke, you have to make a way. I used to, I used to be so embarrassed. And I had to figure out before as a as a junior deacon at the Holman Street Church, I had to figure out before I went into the church and bowed down on my knees. Because, see, the deacons used to come before the church, and they would turn their backs to the church, and they would bow down on their knees, and their shoes were exposed. <laughs> so before I got to church and bowed down my knees as a, as a junior deacon, I had to remember which one had cardboard in it and which one did not. I had to figure out which leg I'm going to put down. And sometimes I got confused. So because I'm confused and I don't remember which foot had cardboard in it, I would turn my face to the crowd and put my feet against the altar so nobody can see me. Let me just share with you. It's all right to go from pillar to post as long as you don't pay and stay from pillar to post. It's, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay to wear what you want to wear, drive where you want to drive, live where you want to live. It's just fine. Yeah. You ought to be prosperous. Yeah. The God we serve got that in some more. Yeah. The God we serve knows how to bless you over here, bless him over there, bless her over there, and bless me right here. The God we serve is a prosperous God, yeah. and he wants his people to be prosperous. The problem I have is those who preach prosperity, they're the only one prospering while the folk out there are not prospering. That's a problem because the prosperity gospel ought to have everybody in the room prospering. Right. Verse number four and five say to you, people are involved. Pleasure is involved. Privilege is involved. Prosperity is involved. And then, verses 4 and 5 says, there's praise in God. The psalmist says, he counts the number of the stars. He calls them by name. Let me share with you, the psalmist is just telling us, as God compares people to the stars, the stars are nothing compared to who you are. That, as the psalmist says that, that he counts the numbers of the stars. Oh, yeah. Nothing gets past God. God is able to see everything. We get excited because we see a shooting star. God knew the star was going to pass past the earth before we even saw the star. God knows the numbers of the stars and God has identified them. Yeah. He called them by name. I'm going to tell you, some people say when you die, God going to call your number. God is not into calling numbers. God is into calling names. And he can call your name, and you can have the same name as somebody else has, and you got to get out of here. The woman, the woman had 13 children. They were doing the census, and the woman had 13 children. And so they went to her house to do the census, and when they got to her house to do the census, they asked her, how many children do you have? And she said, well, there's Joe, there's Bob, there's Glenda. There. He said, no, 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 I don't want to know their name. I just want to know how many do you have. He, she said, well, there's Joe, there's Bob, there's Glenda. She said, he said, no, I don't want to know uh, what their names are. I want to know how many you have. She said, baby, I don't count my children. I give them names. And because I give them names, when I call them, they come running. Let me just tell you, God has given you a name. And God knows how to call your name. And when God calls your name, you will answer. One of these days, my tongue will cleave to the roof of my mouth. One of these days, I will give up my hand of service. One of these days, I will stick my sword into the time, the sin of time. One of these days, y'all going to roll me in here. My hand will be folded. They're going to put a fake smile on my face. And, and they're going to puff my jaws up to make me look a little younger. They're going to put some makeup on me that I've never had on me before. One of these days, I'm going to give 
give up my time and service. They're going to roll me in here. Somebody's going to speak a few words. Somebody's going to laugh. Somebody's going to cry. And you're going to leave here. Go eat fried chicken and forget about me. But God knows my name. And God knows who I am. And God knows what to do with me. God knows the stars by name. Certainly he knows you by name. Every bird that falls from the sky, God knows every bird. Every sparrow, God knows every sparrow. Everything you do, everything you think, God knows it before you do it and before you think it. Because he's an all-knowing God. Verse number five says the reason to praise him is because he is our Lord. In mighty and power. He is our Lord. He's mighty in power. The devil is powerful. But the devil is not all powerful. The devil can influence you. But the devil cannot bless you the way God can bless you. You see what the devil does? He gives you a little excitement right here. Gives you a little excitement right there. He tells you that you're blessed because you got a raise. He tells you that you're blessed because you got a new vehicle. He tells you that you're blessed because you're living in a gated community. And you know how I feel about gated community. Just one car go in, three cars can go in behind them. You know, he, he tells us that we're blessed because we got ADT and breaks. It tells us that we're blessed because we got things going for us. And we're climbing the corporate ladder. But let me share with you, the God we serve, he doesn't bless in that way only. He bless in maturity. He blesses in all ways the way we walk. He blesses in the way we treat people. Yes, yes. The God we serve yes. is a great God. Yes, yes. And we ought to praise Him. Yes. The God we serve is a mighty God. Yes. He's mighty in power. Yes. The God we serve is mighty in both Deuteronomy's power and exclusive power. Exclusive power means that he has the authority to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it, the way he wants to do it. God can do it because he is God. He can choose to do whatever he wants to do with whom he chooses to do it anytime he wants to do it because he's God. That is exclusive power. He has the ability to do it. But Deuteronomy's power, it is explosive power. It is dynamite power. It is the power by which God gives us a way to reason. God gives us a way to witness. God gives us a way to contact others and be a blessing to him. He is the all-powerful and almighty God. He is omnipotent. Omnipotent. He is almighty God. And he ends verse 5. It says that his understanding is infinite. His understanding is innumerable. His understanding is abundant. His understanding is has no beginning, nor does it has any end. Who would praise a God like that? He is God. Let me tell you, he knew you were going to be here today. He knew you were going to be fighting with the devil on your way here. He knew the devil was going to try to talk you out of it. He knew that the devil was going to be on your trail early this morning because you're right, the devil is busy. But folks of Christ have to get busy ourselves. We got to get busy raising up Jesus so men will be drawn. Unto him. He, says it, he has infinite understanding. Infinite. There's no end to his understanding. He is omniscient, meaning that he knows all. He sees all. He knows that before you get to it, God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. God is sovereign. And that's the kind of God we want to serve. And that's the kind of God we want to praise. Verse 6 says, The Lord lifts up the humble. And he casts down the wicked. He casts the wicked down to the ground. You don't have to fight your battles. You just have to praise him. Some of us need a period of praise. Some of us, the psalmist says at the beginning that when we praise him, we ought to praise him with a radical praise. When we praise him, Sister Hughes, I am closing now. When we praise him, Sister David, I'm coming to an end now. 
When we praise him, we ought to get excited about his praise. Deacon Alfred, I'm closing now. The Bible says in Psalm 150 that everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. We ought to thank him and bless him for who he is and not just what he has done. We ought to thank him and bless him for how he does things. We ought to thank him and bless him because he's wiser than we are. How you know he's wiser? Because of Jesus. He's just as much God as God. Yes. Just as much man as man. Yes. And that same Jesus, God gave him as a ransom yes. for you and me. We ought to praise him if we don't praise him for anything else. We ought to praise him for Jesus. Over 2,000 years ago, on a hill called Calvary, over 2,000 years ago, on a skull-shaped hill, over 2,000 years ago, he died between two things. Over 2,000 years ago, my Lord and your God, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. He died on Calvary until the S-U-N refused to shine because the S-O-N was shining. He died on Calvary. Until one centurion soldier cried out, surely this must be the Son of God. He died on Calvary until it became midnight at midday. He died on Calvary until the earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. He died on Calvary. And when he died on Calvary, the earth reeled, the earth rocked. Men saw him die between two he stopped dying long enough to save one man on the cross. He said, this day you will be with me in paradise. The devil thought he had him. He laid his head in the lock of his shoulder and he died, I tell you. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a bar or two. But early that third day morning, early that third day morning, right early that third day morning, before the rooster came from, before Pilate came God. Before the women could anoint his body, he died and he rose from the dead. That same Jesus that rose from the dead, tabernacled around here some 40 days. He caught a cloud and got out of here. And he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. So every time we confess our sins, he forgives us. Every time we stop doing our sins, he cleanses us. He cleanses us. He tells God to give us another chance. One of these old days. I don't know when. And I don't know where. That same Jesus that died on Calvary. That same Jesus that rose early that third day morning. That same Jesus that, that caught a cloud and got out of here. That same Jesus that's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for me. That same Jesus is going to crack the sky. And the voice of the archangel. Gonna crack the sky, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with Him in midair, and we will forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb! Hallelujah to the Lamb! The God we serve is such an awesome God. He recognizes people. It's a pleasure to praise Him. It's a privilege to live for Him. It's prosperity that he gives us. And we ought to praise him. Amen. The door of the church is open. Amen. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. The door is open. Amen. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior. This is your moment. To try him. You've tried it. You've tried her. You've tried him. You've tried them. I recommend that you try Jesus. The door is open. You can come to know him today. You can come to guarantee yourself a spot in heaven. If you've never received him, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. With this little simple prayer. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. 
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. And if you're here today or you're listening today and you're broken, your life is broken. Your situation is broken. Your relationships are broken. I want to pray with you. That as God has fixed me up, He will fix you up also. Father God, we come before you today. We are broken. You made us beautiful. You made us expensive. You made us good to look at. But now we're broken. We ask you to heal as only you can heal. Bless as only you can bless. Save as only you can save. Somebody on the side of my voice, God, need to hear from you. Somebody's about to do something crazy. But God, I ask you to stay the hand of the devil. Somebody of God today is about to commit an endless act. A foolish act. An unnecessary act. I ask you to deliver as only you can. Lord, we ask you to touch everybody. We ask you to touch everybody. We ask you to touch every mind. We ask you to touch every heart. Bless in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome. It is offering time. It is time to get to the Lord through time. Offering is yes. It is offering time. It's time to bless the Lord. It's time to give. Give to the Lord. It is time to give to Him. It is time to, to give our tithes, our sacrificial gifts, as well as our offering. It is time to give. Give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will, you will be served. If you need an envelope up here, Hazel.
come. We thank you for increase. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When I just decide to stand where you are, follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. We 
we also have a thank you notice uh, from the Harpers. And it says, thank you so much for the beautiful mugs. They will remain very special to us. We love and appreciate the acceptance of this church family that was found exactly the time it was needed by our family. Amen. We are so blessed to be a part of such a loving and nurturing place to assist us in raising Alexander in the manner he needs to be raised. Thank you for making the programs available for not only Alexander, but for all these beautiful children. Your future is being shaped every time they get together and is so much brighter than they can realize. So thank you, thank you. And this is from the Hoppers. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Alexander, for leading your family over here. Amen. Thank you. They will be led by a child. Amen. Thank you so much, Alexander. You know he got to be kind of good boy because he's an Alexander. <laughs> Alexander. <laughs> Nah, Sister Davis can attest to Alexander's are good boys. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for those who are, who are on our prayer list. We ask you to continue to bless, heal and touch, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to bless the Ligon's family, the child's family. We ask you to hold them during these times yeah. of bereavement. We ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with them and bless their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We don't recognize our visitors. Thank you so much for visiting. Would you, would you like to stand and say who you are? You don't want? Yes? No? Possible. He wants to stand up and say that. They all stand up together. They will be led by a man. <laughs> <laughs> will you introduce yourself to us and tell us who you brought with you, sir? Hi, my name is Adrian Miranda, and I'm pretty new to this. I've been there a long time since I've been to church. This is my fiance, uh, Natalia Bush. experience was here at our church. Thank you so much for being our guest on today. Amen. Amen. We turn our hearts toward communion. One reason why the Liggins and Childs family is on, well, the reason why the Liggins and Childs family are on our prayer list, Sister Alita, Alita Childs, our transition. So we want to keep that family in prayer. Yes, yes. Um, even at a young age, people are leaving here. Amen. And so we want to make every day count. Every day, we need to make sure that we stay focused on who God is Amen. and what he wants us to do. Oh, yeah. None of us know the time nor the day. And so we want to always stay with the Lord. Amen. Amen. To turn our hearts toward communion, Jesus says that Communion is what we do to recognize what he has already done on Calvary. And his death, his suffering, and his resurrection, we want to remember it. The Bible teaches that Jesus met with his disciples as he was about to leave. He prayed, blessed the bread, blessed the drink, and then he broke the bread. He said to them, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. So we have chosen this Sunday to break the bread with each other, to drink the drink with each other. And we've chosen to remember all Jesus has done for us.
opportunity to partake of your bread and your drink. We ask you to bless us now. Bless us that we will not drink damnation or eat damnation to our soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
to the edge of the wall. 